Hello and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here then hi my name's Zoe over on this channel we do mainly true crime videos it would be amazing if you could hit that subscribe button and also turn on that bell so you're notified every single time that I post and if you're a current subscriber just make sure that your bell's turned on as YouTube doesn't suggest true crime content for some reason so I don't want you to miss an upload. Today's video is another video in my true crime series. I really hope that you're enjoying this week so far. So today's collab is actually with the wonderful Molly Westbrook and if you're an OG on this channel you know that I've worked with her so many times already. She's amazing, she's good at what she does. So make sure once you've watched the, this video on my channel that you go over to her channel and check out her content too. Also, what I'll be doing is putting all the videos together in a playlist which I will leave linked down below so you can catch up on any videos or you can just binge watch the full series when we're done if you really want to. But yeah, I'll leave that linked in the description box. So before getting into this video, I just want to give my usual disclaimer. I mean, no disrespect to anybody I'm talking about, anybody involved in the case, or anybody who knows anybody in the case personally. I'm simply putting this information together just to raise a little bit of awareness on this case. Today we are talking about the disappearance and possible murder of baby Tegan. Kelly Lane was born on the 21st of March 1975 to Sandra and Robert Lane in Manly, Australia. Kelly was part of an active family, her father was a well-known athlete and Kelly really wanted to follow in his footsteps. And she also really wanted to be involved in professional sports. She went to an all-girls school in Manly. She then attended the University of Newcastle where she studied arts, but not too long after she did drop out. She then enrolled at the Australian College for Physical Education. Whilst at college, she did have a part-time job at Ravenswood School for Girls where she would teach water sports. Unfortunately, she didn't finish her degree, but she did stay on at the Ravenswood School for Girls as a sports convener. In 1994, she started a relationship with a rugby league player called Duncan Gillies. And this relationship lasted four years up until 1998. Kelly was a recognised elite water polo player. She played at national and international level. In 1995, she was even part of the silver medal winning Australian junior women's team at the World Championships. During this time, her friends and team members all suspected that Kelly might have been pregnant. Um, she had gained weight, her eating habits had changed. However, they never questioned it because they didn't know what was true and what wasn't. They just assumed that if something was going on, Kelly would have let them know. But their suspicions were true. Kelly had given birth to a baby girl in 1995, just months before the World Championships. However, Kelly decided to give this baby up for adoption. In 1996, Kelly was pregnant pregnant again and it's very hard to understand why and how she kept this from everyone who knew her but nevertheless on the 12th of September 1996 Kelly gave birth to another baby girl called Tegan and 41 hours after giving birth to baby Tegan Kelly leaves the hospital with her baby now obviously this isn't unusual that's something that every mother does however in this case what makes this unusual is the fact that baby Tegan is never seen again Kelly had left the hospital with baby Tegan at around 11pm and then by 3pm she was at home alone. Then a few hours later she was seen at a friend's wedding. She was celebrating with her boyfriend Duncan but her two day old daughter was not with her. In 1999 Kelly was 25 weeks pregnant with her third secret baby. She had travelled to Queensland to try and get an abortion but when doctors saw how far along she was, they refused. So she decided to give her baby boy up for adoption just like she did 
with her first child in 1995. She had told social workers that this was her first baby, which of course was a lie. She also told them that Duncan was a biological father, but this is something that he has always denied. When social workers were trying to find a permanent home for Kelly's baby boy, they decided to run some background checks on Kelly Lane. A child protection officer called John Brovnik found out that this wasn't Kelly's first pregnancy. He just found out that Kelly had given birth to Tegan in 1996 and then later he found out about the first child that was put up for adoption. When Kelly was confronted with these allegations, she firmly denied any previous pregnancies. And she stuck with the story that this pregnancy, this little boy, was her first child. But within days she did change her statement and she said baby Tegan was living with a family in Perth in Australia. As all these pregnancies happened in the four year period that Kelly and Duncan were together, when confronted about these pregnancies, Duncan said he didn't have a clue about any of the pregnancies or any possible children at all. John Brovnik was concerned and this is when he decided to contact police and they started their investigations in 1999. In February of 2001, Kelly was taken in by police and she was questioned about Tegan. And during this time, she was seven months pregnant with her fourth child. Kelly claimed that she had given Tegan to her father Father, Andrew Morris. She had apparently had an affair with him while she was with Duncan. She first said that she handed baby Tegan over in the hospital car park, however she later changed it to the hospital foyer. Kelly had said in interviews that she felt like she couldn't tell her family and friends about her pregnancies because she was worried that this would disappoint them and she was also scared about the shame that comes with not knowing exactly who your child's father is. She said that she just felt completely alone in all of her pregnancies. Later on when Kelly was talking to her mother on the phone, police actually intercepted the call and they heard Kelly's mother asking Kelly why she gave her baby to Andrew Norris, to which she responded, I had no choice. Another weird thing to know is during interviews, Kelly kept mixing up Andrew's surname. At one point it was Morris, then it was Norris. And when police finally confronted her about it and said, which is it? She just said she didn't know. After trying their best to investigate, police decided just to hand over this case to the New South Wales coroner in 2005. A coronial inquest into the disappearance of Tegan Lane started in 2005 and lasted up until February 2006. They went through all the evidence and resources from local police. They established that the local police had tried everything in their power to search for baby Tegan. They also tested any DNA samples that they could. But given investigations had only started three years after Tegan being last seen, this made everything extremely harder. The likelihood of them finding any hard evidence was very, very slim. The coroner declared that he was convinced that Tegan was actually deceased. He said there was a high possibility of foul play being involved and he said there was a very slim chance of Tegan being safe and alive. The coroner ordered for a birth certificate to be made for Tegan and he also ordered for this case to be handed over to the homicide team. In investigations continuing from this, police tried to track down Andrew Norris slash Morris, but despite having nine different accounts from Kelly, they didn't find any information. There was no CCTV and there was no DNA. There was absolutely nothing. Police also decided to search over 9,000 primary schools to try and track down Tegan. They found a couple of girls with the same name, but these leads were soon squished. And police excluded every possible lead without finding any new information. Police believed that they didn't have enough evidence to suggest that Tegan was killed by her mother. So they decided not to charge Kelly with anything and the case was later passed to the director of prosecutions. 
Surprisingly, when this case was passed over to the DPP, they decided to charge Kelly Lane with the murder of her baby, Tegan Lane. However, Kelly pleaded not guilty and so this case was sent to trial. The case was held in Supreme Court and the trial began on the 9th of August 2010. In court, it was said that Kelly allegedly had a total of five pregnancies in the 90s, two abortions, two adoptions and the child that she was accused of murdering, baby Tegan. The jury was told about how she concealed the pregnancies to protect her image and how none of her friends or families had a clue about the pregnancies. The same evidence was given in this trial at the coroner's inquest but they talked more about the extensive work that police had conducted in the years following the inquest. They said that the motive behind the murder was so that she could be in the 2000 Olympic Games. The defence stuck to the fact that there wasn't much physical evidence pointing to where or how Tegan was killed. They believed that if Kelly had done such a horrible crime, they had no evidence so they couldn't really charge her with it. On the 13th of December 2010, the jury found Kelly guilty of lying under oath, however, they couldn't come to a decision on the murder charge. So the jury were asked if they wanted to go with majority and the jury agreed and within hours, Kelly Lane was charged with the murder of Tegan Lane and she was refused bail. And on the 15th of April 2011, Kelly Lane was sentenced to 18 years in prison and she will be eligible for parole in 2023. Since the verdict, Kelly has tried to appeal, but she has been refused any sort of appeal. There was a lot of hearsay after the sentencing. Some people had said that they seen Kelly dump a baby into a bin, but these theories were later debunked by police. Since 2011, the public have been split on the verdict. Did she get the right punishment? Should she have gone to jail? Or did she even kill her baby? But to this day, Kelly has stuck to her guns and she is saying she's innocent. She has done interviews since being in prison and she has just said how the police have got it wrong and she just wants to be home to help raise her fourth daughter. Her family are still working to try and get Kelly home. They believe even though she hid the pregnancies, she hasn't committed such a heinous crime. There are so many documentaries and interviews on YouTube about this case and I will leave all them linked down below if you want to delve in this case a little bit more. But either way, please leave me your thoughts on this case down below in the comments. So that is all for today's video. I am a little saddened that another video is done and gone because we're going to be at the end of the week before we know it. Like I said at the beginning, I will put a full playlist together so if you want to, if you miss any episodes or you want to jump back or whatever, you want to binge watch the full playlist, it'll be linked there so you can watch it. Thank you to the amazing Molly for being on this video with me. She knows I love working with her all the time. She's amazing. She is amazing. Let's give her a round of applause. She's just amazing, like, I'm not even trying to be patronising, that sounds so bad. But she's generally really, really lovely, so... I am sorry if you've heard any noise in this video, but as most of my OGs are aware, I have a child, and sometimes it is hard to film with a child in the background. So yeah, I apologise. So please give this video a massive thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Please leave your thoughts down below. Don't forget to subscribe. And I shall see you tomorrow in another True Brand video. Bye.